everyone, what's up? This is Simon, back with fresh Ionic content for our Coding Tuesday. Today, I wanna to talk about course issues. So most of you will very likely already have encountered an error like this, where your request to an API or server was blocked because of the same origin uh, policy. And there are a few ways to fix this. So um, let's take a look at a code that could actually also be a solution for you. So I started a blank new Ionic app and what we want to do is we want to make three requests to um, the Star Wars API, so uh, which looks like swappy.co slash API slash films and this will give you a nice response. But actually um, this only works in things like Postman or the browser and suddenly you use it in your Ionic app and everything uh, crashes with the error you've seen before. The reason for this is that uh, once you run the Ionic application, it will be on something like um, localhost, uh, whatever, uh, port 8100. So it will look like this somehow. And you're making an HTTP request from this domain to this. And this is by default restricted using JavaScript uh, requests. But now the solution um, we can use actually a native plugin, a Cordova plugin, which will then transform the requests we make into a native code request and send out the request. So that's what we want to do. Let's see how to do it. Um, first of all, after you've created the app or use your existing app, you need to add the Cordova plugin advanced HTTP. So this one will be used along with the Ionic native uh, plugin um, installation not yet finished. But anyway, we can already continue to the app module in which we will have to add. Oh, I thought I had no colors. I was a bit scared for a second. Um, in here, we're going to add both the oh, I positioned my microphone. It sucks every time. Really, I don't know where to put it. If it put it away, it is too silent. If I do it in front of my head, the camera is not focused. Um, there are really problems, first world YouTuber problems here. So import the HTTP client module if I find the keys. Uh, from that is, I can't do it like this, sorry. Uh, from add angular common HTTP. Um, because along with our Ionic native package that we install, we also want to make the standard request. So I want to show you how you can balance both of these things inside your application. So then besides the HTTP client module, we also use the HTTP from the new package that is just about to be installed. So then as always add the HTTP client module in here and the Ionic native package to our providers. Great. So let's continue to our home page in HTML. And actually for the HTML, I'm too lazy and I will just bring in everything today. Um, maybe not the numbers from my code snippet and run Ionic surf in the background because really there's not a lot we need here. Just three buttons. Um, we will have three different functions. So get standard. I will showcase how to normally get the data using the standard HTTP call, then using our native HTTP plugin, and then maybe also with an additional fallback to get the data everywhere. And of course, we always want or need the constructor. So we're going to use the HTTP client, first of all, make sure you get the import right. And then uh, let's call the second one, perhaps native HTTP, uh, a bit tricky if you use um, both plugins in one file, but it should work like this. And then also maybe the uh, private uh, platform and finally the loading controller. So we can display a little loading um, loading screen when we request the data from the API. Okay. Um, Ionic surf, are you Ionic? Sur okay. It is Ionic surf, of course, not Ionic server. I'm sorry for that Ionic. Um, 
what I wanted to say is we just got the list below with some data of the films. So that's what we request from the API. It's actually a snippet from the Ionic Crash Course. You can find the link below the video. And of course, if you haven't done so, um, uh, well, yes. Um, interesting. Anyhow, um, of course, also make sure please to like the video and subscribe to this channel if you want more great Ionic and developer videos. Um, there are a ton more of videos besides this one. So um, if you've done that, you can continue watching the video and we got our three functions in here. So let's see, first of all, um, I think the standard way of retrieving data is pretty clear to everyone already. Um, in my snippet, I also used async await for the loading controller and then finalize um, no auto import today. So as far as I know, finalize is inside rxjs operators. Uh, yes, looks great. So this will simply be called once um, the stream is finished. And then we got our own data array, which is empty in the beginning. So doing the request like this actually works right now with the Star Wars API. Um, I think they added maybe the headers at some point. Um, that's also a recommendation I want to give you, of course. So uh, good news, everyone. It is protected. Um, Yay, great news. Um, actually, this was working yesterday. I don't know why. Um, bit strange, but anyhow. So that's the problem. We're just making the same call like we did here. We do it in Postman, everything works. And here it is not working because it is uh, blocked. So normally, if you control the server, my um, or my advice for you would be to simply implement cores on the server side if you get an app that is requesting the data from JavaScript. But if you can't change the server, then you need to be creative. And that's what we want to do right now. So um, maybe you want to use almost the same control flow for your other operations. Maybe you're also using an observable in the view. So therefore, you want to keep this. The problem now is that first of all, um, Nate, let's call this native call. Um, if we use our HTTP plugin to make a get request, um, this will return a promise. So in the end, we have to return or convert the promise to an observable. So that's problem number one. Um, the second problem is that the data returned in here is actually sometimes not really formatted um, accordingly to JSON. So what I tried was um, no parameters, but for this one, we will add um, content type application JSON, uh, of which I'm actually not sure if it made a huge difference. Um, and then also uh, once we get the data, uh, which we will somehow get, um, we need to convert the data a bit by using JSON parse data dot data. So, um, and what we want to pipe is now we need a new observable and to get an observable from a promise, which is promise because you can see that then right here is by using from. So auto import actually works and then put the native call in and this expression becomes suddenly an observable that we can pipe as well, finalize, uh, hit the, hide the loading. And in here, maybe we can also console log native data as well. And then we will see that this property, actually this object is already JSON, but this is not. And this contains the actual information that we need. So if you want to use your code on both um, the web and the mobile application, which is the get data everywhere function, you could simply make a check if this dot platform is Cordova and then um, call get native data and otherwise oh, you could do this actually in one line. I'm maybe I do it. Maybe uh, uh, I want to do it. Can we do it? Yes, please. Let's just do this. Um, does this work? I don't know. 
let's see. Um, hmm. Looks good. Okay, so we did it in one line now. Um, yeah, I don't know why, I just like to do that expression. Um, the problem now is that the first call is not working because of course issues and the second is not working because we're using Cordova in the browser and the third is not working because we are redirecting to the first. So what you can do is either test it on a device, what I wanted to do initially, but I think what you can do as well is use Ionic Cordova platform ad browser. Um, so that's a special platform because I saw on the page of the plugin, maybe I can bring it in. If you take a look at a Cordova plugin, which is always recommended if you use them, um, you can go to the source folder and then you will see the implementations for the different platforms. And actually they have an implementation for the browser platform as well. And in this, uh, I think they will use some sort of proxy to make the calls uh, because otherwise it wouldn't work as well anyway. Um, so I will try to add the browser platform and run it again. And if it's not working, we will see each other on a device. Okay, change of plans. The browser platform from Cordova is not really working that well. So I deployed it to my iOS device. And also I had to make a little change in here um, because the data we pass in here um, still contains the results key, which we also use up here. So in order to make those things similar and to make the data at this point the same, uh, we need to call this. So just simply log it out. And that's also the reason why I brought up the Safari. So now if I get the standard data, I will get cross origin redirection. Um, actually, I changed the API to HTTP, not the SSL version, and then you get a redirect and then you get the error. Um, I don't know why um, it worked before in the browser, not completely sure. Anyway, um, you will get this with other APIs as well. But now if we refresh this, oh no, I hit refresh, I don't want to. Um, if we get the native data, we see this is the native data. And this right here is also the problem. I hope this is not above my head. No, my head should be there. So um, the native data in here is still a string. That's why we parse it. And then we also need to access the results. And then we can finally display the data. And also if we make the call to get data everywhere on the platform, it will make the Cordova call and everything will just work. So that's one way to fix your course issues. Um, of course, the recommended way is always to uh, contact either uh, your server team or if you do it yourself, simply apply the headers to your server. But if you're using a foreign API that you can't change, no chance, then the um, native plugin is a way. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Um, the native plugin is a way to prevent this by transforming your JavaScript HTTP calls to native HTTP calls. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, like always, make sure to like it, make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out my Ionic Academy and all the other great videos in here, and I hope to see you inside the next one.